What's up? And welcome back to another episode of the Allie from Corporate Podcast. I'm your host, Allie. And today we have a very special guest. I always say that, but this one is extra special because we're talking about project management today, which you know is dear, near, and clear in my heart. We're having Mukhtar Kadiri as the guest today. And in this episode, Mukhtar and I talk about what it's like working in project management, how you can get a job in project management, and our experiences with just the job search, the job itself, the, the PM career track. So if you are stuck and you're like, what should I do next? And you're thinking about project management, if you've always wondered what's the difference between program and project management, and if you want to know how you can showcase your potential as a PM or just as a job seeker so you can get a job in PM, this is the episode for you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, Mukhtar. Thank you so much for joining the Ali from Corporate Podcast today. Thank you for having me, Ali. Excited of to course. be here. Of course. Yeah. So for those of you that have never met or seen Mukhtar before, he is a career coach who specializes in helping people land one hundred dollars to $300,000 a year PM roles. And by PM, is that project manager and program manager? Yes, yes. Predominantly, so project and program manager type roles. And it could also be roles that don't necessarily have the PM abbreviation. So it could be chief of staff. It could be um, supply chain manager roles. It could be program coordinator. So, you know, it, within the project program space, so to speak. Cool. Yeah. And you and I share a special thing in common. We both used to work in the program management space or the project management office, PMO. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to tell you a quick little story about how I busted my way into the program management office at my a couple jobs ago. Um, and tell me if this is kind of what what you think it takes to to break into a PM role. So my experience was 10 years in the medical device industry as a mechanical engineer. And you and I have talked about this before that everybody's a project manager, um, regardless mm -hmm. of if you have that title or not. And we can talk about what that means later. But I decided that I didn't want to be an engineer anymore. I wanted to be a project or program manager because I like tracking budgets. I like making timelines. I like updating people above and below how things are progressing. I like reaching goals with a team. So what I did was I found a position that was available within my company and I made a document about, it was basically, even though I've never been a project manager, here's all the projects I've managed. And it was just an explanation so that I was helping somebody see me in that light. And I ended up getting the job and program management turned out to be a really good fit for me. So have you seen somebody do that before? Why do you think that worked? Yeah. So I, I think this is the thing with project and program management. It, I think many of us, if not most of us sort of fell into the role and, you know, there's this thing called the accidental project manager or the accidental uh, program manager. So a lot of people are actually managing projects and programs, but they don't realize it without having the titles, right? Yep. Um, you, know, you know, some of you might know, like, so, so basically the, the the definition of a project is, is something that has a start date and an end date and that has a particular outcome, right? So it's temporary, it's not repetitive, but it's geared towards a, a specific outcome. So even planning a vacation is, is a project, planning a wedding, is, is definitely a project, right? Yeah. Um, so having said that, many people have done these type of, types of things, right? Where it's it's temporary and it's geared towards a particular outcome. Um, so so I, I think your story is very is very familiar. Um, even for me, before I had the official titles, I was managing and leading even multi million dollar uh, projects and programs, right? Wow. Um, and, and and I think that this is what you 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 would tend to see. Um, and I think that, you know, a, a lot of people tend to be intimidated, like outsiders, they tend to be intimidated by the title of project manager or program manager. Even uh, people in the PM space, like maybe they're not a project coordinator, but they are intimidated by the program manager title. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I like to say is that, you know, just really look out for program manager titles because one person's project manager is another person's program manager. Yes. You know, like in a lot of companies, they don't even have the project manager title. They just have program manager one, two, three, and it goes all the way, right? And yeah. if you look at the requirements, you would see that for a lot, for, in a lot of cases, you would actually meet those requirements, right? So 
Um, yeah. So to go back to your question, I, I think that your story is 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 quite common because many people sort of fall into into uh, project and program management. Yeah. yeah, and there's no degree for it in school. There's no like concentration. You can get a certification. I think it's called a PMP, right? Yeah, yeah. So the PMP is uh, you know the most popular, um, a well-known certification. But what I've noticed, um, especially here in Canada, is that there are now these degree, graduate degree diplomas um, that have a, you know, that are just geared towards project management. So it's not like, I haven't seen the undergraduate degrees where it's like four years doing project or program manager, but I've noticed that yeah. there are these maybe one-year diplomas that you can do maybe in addition to other things. Um, oh. And a lot of people say, you know, tend to have that here in Canada, and then they uh, that's sort of their entry into the Canadian job market. That's really cool. Um, and I think that that would be a cool series of classes to take as a student because the skills that you learn as a project manager are so transferable to other areas in your life. Like you said, planning a wedding or being a parent and just managing all your kids' schedules. Mm -hmm. Um, or even like household duties, like dishes and laundry and, yeah. you know, everything like that. So um, what do you mean when you say that we're all project managers? Yeah, because I, I, I think that, you know, many of us have, you know, that thing where we have a goal and it's, you know, it's limited in terms of timelines, right? So, you know, there's something even, it could be even, getting a certification even getting a project management certification you can even consider <laughs> that a project a, a project yeah. right because it, it's finite and then there is a particular goal right so so i i think you know in that case you know you can you can you can consider pro pretty much all of us you know project managers of course there are degrees right and and there's a reason why you know people get paid lots of money to manage projects, right? Because there yes. are best practices, there are, you know, there is refining and honing the craft and all of that, right? And and there are situations where, you know, the stakes are really high. In some cases it's, it's life or death, right? Yes. So 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 yeah, but you know, I guess it's it's a spectrum, right? So, you know, it like maybe planning something that's very low risk in maybe inconsequential like a trip to the grocery store or something. Yeah, that that could be considered a project. And then on the other end, there, there could be, you know, building, maybe building a bridge or, you know, launching a rocket to space with astronauts in it. That's also considered a project and, and you know, that's more consequential and, and, and high risk. Yeah, exactly. I love that, that spectrum description. So let's go back to pay. Um, I really believe in salary transparency and I have mm -hmm. no shame or embarrassment telling people how much I've made. So I was shocked to see how much more I could make as a program manager than a mm. manufacturing engineer at the same company for a mm. surgical robotics piece of equipment. Mm. So when I was an engineer, a manufacturing engineer with about seven years of experience, I was making 105,000 a year in California. And when I made this you know, special PM document and got that PM role, um, I, I was a program manager and I was making $145,000 a year in my first PM role. Nice. And I mean, you help people get jobs between, you know, from a hundred to 300,000 a year. What would be the difference between a PM that was making a hundred and a PM that was making 300, let's say same company, maybe same industry, same state, just so they're comparable. Yeah. So I, I I think that might be a. We can pick that apart. That might be a. It might be a bit difficult to to find that range within a particular company, right? Hundred to three hundred. Yeah. But I, I would say, um, <clears throat> so so when it comes to entry level PM roles, maybe like project coordinator, so below the level of a project manager. So you, you, you know you, you can find those below 100 you could be below six figures right it's it's not a common some might stretch to that 100 you know six figure uh, a limit but when you now get to like the project manager roles um typically many of them will now like cross the six figure mark um but when you now start to head into like the 200 you know uh, or, or even above that so there are two things either you are 
a, a people manager, right? You're managing other project managers or other program managers, or you are an individual contributor that is senior, right? So in some um, in some companies, you would see maybe like a lead program manager, and then you will see maybe a staff program manager, and then a principal program manager. So this sort of it, it's sort of similar to some of the levels that they have in engineering in tech, right? It yep. is you know you have senior, lead, staff, and then principal. So principal tends to be like maybe at the VP level, right? So in some organizations, you also have a similar track, right? So so that's how you know when you climb the indiv- the IC contributor. Um, track you also start to get into some of those high high figures industry also matters right so you know some yeah. industries pay better than others another thing that i'll add is also in demand skill sets right so for example now ai is hot and if you are you know like somebody with your background now you, you are an engineer and then you became a program manager like that combination is very very attractive because yeah. you can speak the technical language you can better lead engineers and and you have credibility with the engineers because you can speak their language right yeah. so if you if you have that and, and i think that that was probably also one of the reasons for that you know that jump that you had you know because it, yeah, it's justified it was, killer, I mean, it was a killer combination the engineering exactly. and they said that they were like you and, could lead a team of engineers and they would respect you rather exactly. than these project these program managers that don't know how to talk about the engineering things yes Yes, yeah, and, and that like that credibility is crucial. I, I think that for a project manager, a program manager, like that is the one thing that you have because a lot of times you are leading without authority, right? You are these yes. people are not reporting to you, and that's one of the very challenging things. I think fun, I agree. but 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 also I think many people consider find it frustrating, right? Yes. Because you don't have authority over people, but then you need them to do the job to get the project successful. So you have all this responsibility, but no authority, right? But the way you actually bridge that gap, the way you you get things done is through your credibility. And a lot of times with credibility, you can even have more authority than somebody with direct authority. Like you can be, I've seen people that they don't have anybody reporting to them, but they are more influential than yeah maybe some people in the C-suite, right? But it's because of that credibility, right? So, you know, going back to your case, I, I think one of the reasons that, you know, I mean, I wasn't in your company, but I, I'm guessing one of the reasons why um, it just made business sense to to give you that position and to give you that raise was because you, you already spoke the language of engineers and, you know, you could lead them credibly. And also, you know, they probably saw your good communication skills and leadership skills already. So that was a killer combination, like you mentioned, right? Yeah. So, um yeah, so just going back to my point of wh- wh- when you are, when you are, you can really command high salaries when you are an expert or when you have, you know, a particular in demand skill set. So, for example, like cybersecurity now is like a lot of people, a lot of roles in that space are still unfilled, right? So, there's yeah. this uh, demand for cyber. So, if you have cybersecurity um, skills or if you have experience leading cybersecurity projects, so you know, that, that's an in-demand skill. Another one now could be AI, right? So, I mean, I know there's a lot of buzz around AI, but if you have the actual skills that many of these companies are looking for, then that could, that can be um, a potential um, way to really boost your 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 pay. Your pay. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, so I want to go back to something that you said. So, um, or maybe it was last week, you and I were talking about showing potential. Um, do you think being a program manager and if you want to show your potential to your employer to either get a better job or a raise, um, do you think program and project managers save the company money or do you think they're making the company money? If you want to like showcase your value to a company, are you going to say like, I'm a project manager and I can make you money because this, this, and this, or is it the other way around? Do they save money or do they make money? Hmm. Like the RO, like the company, if they want to get a good ROI on hiring you, are they going to look at how much yeah. money the project manager could potentially save the company? So, so making, are you talking about yeah. a project manager that's already in the company and that's yep. making a case for a raise? Is that is that? Let's is it, yeah, let's talk about that that okay. scenario. So, so, so I, I, you know, I, I I think that project managers, program managers, um, in as much as the field is 
is quite specific. The range of projects that we manage are very vast, right? So, um, you know, you, you can manage a process improvement project, for example, which is, you know, trying to find efficiency. So exactly in that case, you know, if, whether you're saving time and all that, all of that translates to saving, saving money, right? It, it, it's, it's saving cost. But you can also do projects where you're launching something to market, right? So, in, yeah. in, you know, maybe you're launching a new product you know, and, and that happens a lot. So in that case, you are, I guess, you know, making money for the company. So I, I think it really depends on the initiative that you're leading, but I think you can always justify um, you can only really justify both. Now, the one thing that's very important, and I think that this is a mistake that we often make until until it's time to look for a job, and then we realize, okay, you know, we now start to look back. So, one thing that project managers and program managers should do before they venture on anything is that at the beginning you try to define what success would look like, right? Yeah. So you might not exactly know, but just going in, you should have an idea of okay, this is what I'm targeting, so that you're constantly measuring. Right. And you are very outcomes oriented. And so that, you know, at the end of the project, you can say, okay, this is what I achieved. And the reason why I say that, <clears throat> you know, this is a lot of times this is missed is because a lot of times, not many project managers or program managers have the luxury of starting from the beginning. I know. Sometimes a lot of you times, inherit a project in the middle of it, which is tough. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes even worse is that the project started, people thought that they could do it by themselves. And then they realized, oh, oh crap. We need a project manager or a program manager. So, so a lot of times that's when you come in. You come in when they really see that they need you, right? So, it, and it's very easy to just forget about metrics and, you know, it's just like, just stop the pain right now and let's move on. So, so you're like in this firefighting mode. And then sometimes the outcomes can sort of uh, recede, you know, um, to, you know, to the background. So, so yeah, the one thing I would say is like be very, very outcomes because whenever, whenever you start, um, anything. It's almost like, why am I doing this? And what impact is this going to have in your organization? You know, if you can't really answer those questions, then I would really question um, what you're doing. That You know, you try to find the answers and, and just get alignment with leadership. Um, and, and also, I, I, I feel like if you're able to do that, it just really showcases your maturity as a project leader. Because at the end of the day, um, you are in there, you, you are hired to actually make an impact in your organization. Right. And um, and sorry, I, I know I'm going on, on a bit of a tangent, but the, but the one point I was going to make is that in, in many cases, you also see situations where people question the value of a project manager, yeah. right? I, I, you know, so, and I think that that comes because people, you know, people are not necessarily seeing the value that you're bringing, right? So, so when you start off anything saying, okay, this is the value that I intend to bring, this is my success criteria, and you're always communicating that, so I, I think it helps to sort of... Um, it helps to to remove that questioning, that constant questioning of what what value yeah. you bring to the table. I agree, and I've also heard that be called definition of done, success criteria, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definition of done. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I launched my new community this week, Career Catalyst on School. Mm -hmm. One of the right. first challenges that I gave people was to define their career vision, and that's essentially like you're setting a goal for yourself. And maybe there's an, a deadline in mind, you know, in the next mm -hmm. five years, I want to be here. But I think it really helps to have that definition of done or that success criteria, especially like not only talking about project management, but talking about your goals, because how do you know when you've reached your goal? If you, if mm -hmm. your goal is just to get better at learning German, like what's the, you know, like what's the metric you're holding yourself, like what's the rubric you're holding yourself to. So yeah, yeah being a project manager definitely kind of shown, it shined a light on that of like, you need to know what the definition of done is for the project. And sometimes I would go to leadership and I'd ask them like, Hey, is this right? Is this the success criteria? And sometimes leadership would argue and mm -hmm. they don't even know what yeah. the definition of done is for the project. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. so part of being a PM was facilitating these conversations up above and gaining alignment so that clear a clear set of tasks could trickle down yeah yeah and i think that that's one of the most um important roles of a pm you know like like you mentioned facility if you look at a lot of jds for program managers and project managers it, it's really that cross-functional collaboration or stakeholder management right so yes. a lot of times 
like you know people are not on the same page like even in meetings people think they're on the same page but as a project manager program manager you have to say uh no i i think i'm hearing two different things here or and and you know you have to sort of you know clearly state the different sides and and sort of help help drive alignment and it's not easy it's not no. it's not easy because um uh, you know like i mentioned credibility is also very important you know, you need to be credible for and a lot of times you're going to be managing people that are above you in rank, right? So these are people that can fire you, you know? So, yeah. but you, you need to have their, their, you need to be able to hold them accountable. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also even, um, sometimes challenge them and, and even, you know, um, yeah, hold them to task when it comes to delivering on, on their task or their, their, their deliverables, right? Yeah. And for anybody that's listening, who's never hold, heard of stakeholder management, First of all, I have a joke for you. Um, why do vampires make bad project managers? Why do wow. Because they don't want to talk to their stakeholders. Nice. So, okay, for anybody who doesn't I was, know... I was going to say because, because they suck, you know. Because they suck. That's a good one, too. Um, and they all come out at night. <laughs> I can think of a lot of reasons now, but... Um, so for anybody that doesn't know what stakeholder management is, I'll give you a, a simple example. So let's say you're, do, you're the project manager for a project that's making a widget and you need somebody from qual the quality department on your team. You need somebody from the engineering department on your team, somebody from the manufacturing department on your team. The leaders of all of those departments have different agendas. The quality department wants you to stay in compliance. The manufacturing department wants you to save money if, if, with packaging, you know, and so on and so forth. And so sometimes during a project, you need to go to these heads of these department and ask questions. And sometimes they have conflicting agendas with the other heads of the department. And so that's kind of stakeholder management is keeping everybody aligned, which is not easy. Like, like you're saying, how do you maintain alignment? among people that are above you that was like the hardest part for me yeah no it, it's definitely not easy but i i think a lot of a lot of um yeah i i came on saying I might, I might sound like a like a broken record but i think credibility is really the foundation yeah and and, and there are ways to to increase your credibility so um you know I, I like to think of it as it's kind of like an investment so you, you sort of are are put in deposits into the the credibility bank right that will pay Ooh. off late, later on right okay. and one of one of the ways that you can do that is um my my teacher he used to say that there's this credibility equation and um and there there, there are three things that that affect credibility so number one is is expertise knowledge and expertise so you need to be able to hold your own when you're talking to people in their own areas right so yeah. for example when you're speaking with engineers they need to feel like you get them and you can follow along right um when you can do that you know your, your credibility goes up if not your credibility goes down another thing is that you also need to be able to um show that you're an expert in your own area right so yeah i'm not saying all program managers should be experts should be technical or all of that but you know for the people that you are you're dealing with you need to be able to um you know, question, maybe challenge and facilitate, you know, understand, et cetera. But you definitely need to show that you're an expert in your own field of project or program management. Now, now I, know, I know we said that in, in a way, everybody is a program or project manager, but, but there are levels, right? You know, yep, so, levels so you need to be, able, yeah. So you need to be able to not show that you're a glorified, you know, uh, but, but yeah, that, that you are, that you really know your stuff, you know? Right. Um, and when you can show that, when you can demonstrate that, then that increases your your credibility. Now, the second part of credibility is um, just closing the say do gap. I don't know if you heard about the say do gap. No, so tell you, me about this. I, yeah, I so love it already. Is it like showing versus telling? Yeah, something like that. So if you say you're going to do something, um, yeah, you, you better do it. And it could yeah. be as little as I'm going to send you that email tomorrow. When you don't send it tomorrow, people will notice. Like, I, I think a lot of. That's no, so funny on. that you're saying this. I promised somebody a business proposal last Friday and I did not get it to them on Friday and I'm going to get it to them probably tomorrow. And that's so funny that you're <laughs> saying that because shame on me. I know it's like, yeah. I never do that, but it felt bad not 
saying, not doing what I said I was going to do on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And even on that, like, you know, stuff happens, like we get busy, but you know, as long as you just sort of mention that and you're proactively communicating, like, I know that I was going to, I knew I said I was going to do this, but Hey, yeah. stuff happened. Like if you can do that, like that still maintains your credibility. And even that might even enhance your credibility because you're keeping to your word. Right. Because, yeah. you know, and people notice that because Unfortunately, it's not common for a lot of people will. Oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. I will send it, you know, like maybe two hours later or tomorrow or something like that. But or, it is a big I'll, deal. But, yeah, but people it's notice, trust. right? Because, exactly. Exactly. So, so when you keep on breaking trust, like you mentioned, like, you know, when you keep on not, not closing the gap, then you, you are breaking trust and it just really harms your credibility, right? Yes. I mean, I know if someone is like, whenever he says, oh, I'll get this done tomorrow, I know. Like, I know not to expect as a project manager, as a program manager, I know not to expect it to be done. <laughs> right. So I, like, like that is like, you know, I know it's not going to be done and I have to start thinking of, you know, alternatives and, and risk, you know, so it just adds a, just another level of cognitive overload and you are not, you, you're seen more as um, a thorn as opposed to, you know, oh, I can trust you and just, you know, not worry about you. Right. So. Yeah. So, so that's another part of it. And then I, th I think the, the third part of, you know, credibility is just really, um, how do I put this? Uh, not, not putting your self-interest above the group self-interest, right? So, you know, because there are some people like the way of operating is just CYA. Like, you know, I'm, whenever we speak about anything, I'm going to put it in email copy everybody you know so if you're always doing stuff like that you know people yeah it just comes across like you're just covering your butt you know you're just yes. yeah and that doesn't quite breed trust right so you know um or you are yeah you're basically just putting your own self-interest above the the uh, the team or the group self-interest I, I mean not to say that you shouldn't document things but you know uh, when you're always doing that you're not gonna build you're not gonna earn trust right so yeah so yeah. these are the three components i think that really help with with credibility I have an example of one way that I put my team when, back when I was a PM that I put my team members well-being above my own in a mild way. Hmm. Um, one of the team members uh, was going to present a status update in my meeting that day, but she had an emergency with her child and she messaged me the update and she said, can you please give this update for me? I have to go. And I said, hmm. absolutely. No problem. Mm -hmm. So I covered for her in the meeting. I gave her update. People had questions. I gave them to her later, but that's like one small way that a PM can have their team members back. And then in turn, they will do good work for you when you yeah, say, definitely. can you get this done today? Or can you give me an update ASAP? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. So before we wrap up, I have one more question for you. Oh, two more questions, but one more PM related question. So I, I love graphic design. I love making things look beautiful online um, but I thought that MS Project, Microsoft Project, had the ugliest user interface and the ugliest um, timeline visuals. What was your favorite tool for making good-looking timelines, if you have to show them in a presentation? Uh, this podcast is not sponsored by the MS Project, It's right? not sponsored. <laughs> this is not sponsored. It might be sponsored by a different company, but <laughs> definitely not those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm also the same way as well. I'm very creative. I love to do, you know, like, yeah, creative stuff, graphic design and all of that. Even videos, I do that like myself. But, but yeah, so I, I really love beautiful visuals, especially when you're, you're trying to represent um, project status to a particular audience, right? Maybe people that are, you know, that are high up, right? You know, so being able to communicate, like, in a, in a single slide or just picture what is going on and what's most important i think that takes skill and i think you know it's yeah. it's a very very important um skill to have so so yeah um to be honest it, it's something that i'm still looking for because i find that like for the different tools that i've used they might be good with one thing but then they lack you know another so so yeah. so it's one thing to be you know to have the visuals but it's also it's also another thing to be able to, when you drill down, to be functional, like to be able to say, okay, yeah. I have these dependencies. I'll be able to alert somebody when it's almost close to the deadline, you know, to be able to just drill down, like, you know, and, and I, I haven't quite found 
a tool that, that combines both. So I'm still looking, <laughs> but I, I know that there, there, there are a lot of tools out there. But I would say that um, from a Gantt chart perspective, when you're like looking at things from, you know, for, for those of you that don't know, but the Gantt chart is when you're looking at timelines, basically from the high level, right? I found Tom's planner to be quite helpful. Ooh, so Tom's planner, yeah. So, it, and it's easy like to configure. It's almost, you know, like you just drag and drop. And as you're doing that, it's updating, um, it's updating the, the data the and all of that. I love yeah, well, this. The dates. This is yeah, nice. Tom's, Tom's planner is one. And then, I mean, like, you know, no, no affiliation with Tom's planner. I'm just, you know, um, mentioning tools that I've seen. Um, let's see. There was one other one. Have you ever used Office Timeline Pro, the PowerPoint no. extension? That was my no. favorite. Um, okay. Yeah, check it out. Office Timeline Pro. They used to have a free version. They might only have a paid version now. And I feel like mm. it was only $19 a month when, back when I was using it a couple years ago. Okay. But it's a PowerPoint extension. And it's, like you say, it's beautiful visually. There's lots of cool templates with color schemes, but it's not good at managing all of the tasks and subtasks and dependencies mm -hmm. and durations. Mm -hmm. um, I like smart sheets also. Um, they were kind of the best combination I found of like really tactically and detailed in a good way, but also like beautiful timelines. But yeah, there's a ton of different tools out there. And yeah, there's no one size fits all perfect solution. Microsoft Project mm -hmm. is not visually appealing, but it is probably the one of the best for just tracking every single detail yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and i think that that's where um because yeah microsoft is like you can pretty much it's like heavy duty i should say yes and then smart sheet you know sort of i could be wrong but i, I, I seem to remember this from somewhere where, where it's like okay for microsoft most people don't use a lot of the features of Microsoft, but a lot of people use a subset. So I think that's, you know, Smartsheet sort of created that. I could be wrong, but this is sort of what I remember. So they created that. So it's, it's you know, Smartsheet is very useful for many people, for, for most people, but then in other areas, it might, it might fall short. Yeah. Yep. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, I know you're a career coach and you help people land jobs that are very, very well-paying jobs in the PM space. Um, mm -hmm. Are you taking on clients right now? And how can people get in touch with you if they're looking for a PM job? Yeah, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, thanks for, for, for mentioning that. Yes, yeah, so right now we are taking clients. Um, but, you know, if, if you go on my profile, you can, you can uh, book a call and then it will take you through our um, pre-screening uh, phase because we usually we take clients that are a good fit. Um, so, yeah, if, if you pass that initial fit, if you pass that, if you pass that initial screening, then you'll be able to book a call with with me or somebody on my team, and then we can have a conversation to see if we are going to be a good match. Awesome! And I've heard good things. And you definitely sound like you you've been there, done that. You know how to help a job seeker showcase their value in this crazy job market we're in. Um, I really appreciate you joining us. This was awesome. I think this was really helpful for a lot of listeners who maybe don't know what a project coordinator is, or a program manager, or what PMO is or stakeholder management. So thank you for coming on here. You were an awesome guest. Yeah, no, this was fun. Yeah, we should do it again. We will, we will. Cool. Well, I will talk to you later. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you for the next episode.